I'm Ajay Singh, Senior Vice President and General Manager of the Management Suites Business Unit at VMware. For the past five or so years, we've been executing on our mission to deliver our Cloud Management Platform, or CMP, the control plane of the software-defined data center. Over the past six months, we have completely refreshed our CMP with updated components across key areas of automation, operations, and cloud business management. Our mission is to deliver the industry's best enterprise-ready cloud management platform. By enterprise-ready, I mean the ability to completely automate the delivery of both infrastructure and applications, and to manage not just day one provisioning, but also day two operations as well, with built-in costing, security, and compliance. Today, we are taking a CMP to the next level with our multi-cloud strategy. We recognize that customers are increasingly using multiple clouds, whether vSphere or other hypervisor-based private clouds, or public clouds such as AWS, Azure, vCloud Air, and one of our more than 4,000 vSphere-based vCloud Air network partners. The challenge becomes, how do you manage these multiple clouds? At VMware, we are evolving our automation operations, and cloud business management capabilities into a next-generation multi-cloud management platform. We know that developers want more agility as well as support for new approaches, such as containers and microservices. And they want the ability to work in a variety of cloud environments depending on the requirements of their applications. Our multi-cloud management platform is being designed with a developer and application focus delivering a developer cloud with full API access. Our multi-cloud platform is the vision for tomorrow. But there's a proven path to the hybrid cloud that exists today. Thousands of our customers are successfully working with private and public clouds using our CMP solution. That path starts with virtualization. Virtualization is the foundation for the private cloud, as well as many public clouds, and vSphere remains the best virtualization solution in the market today. But as virtualization scales, management is necessary. vSphere with operations management can deliver significant benefits in both the cost of managing your infrastructure, as well as ensuring the availability of your critical applications. As customers build out their virtualized infrastructure and environment and make the transition to the cloud, we have found that most have done so with projects that address three key use cases. Intelligent operations, automated IT to infrastructure as a service, and DevOps-ready IT. Let's look at each in turn. The first use case is intelligent operations. The complexity associated with increasing scale, more dynamic workloads, and the adoption of hybrid cloud computing has made managing today's application environments extremely challenging. VMware solutions deliver unified management of compute, network, storage, and applications in a single view of environmental health. Our proactive operations management capacity optimization and service costing and metering capability deliver higher performance and availability of your services, more efficient utilization of your infrastructure, and greater productivity from your IT teams. The second use case is automated IT to infrastructure as a service. Many IT teams have semi-automated delivery of infrastructure to development and production groups using scripts, and configuration management tools. However, most have not yet achieved either speed or delivery or even high levels of operating efficiency. VMware CMP enables IT teams to fully automate the delivery and ongoing management of shared service infrastructure. Infrastructure as a service takes these as efforts one step further by exposing the CMP's automation capabilities 
directly to the IT customers through a self-service portal. Using a CMP, IT teams have the ability to model infrastructure resources as blueprints that embed both automation and policy, reducing the time it takes to provision infrastructure from weeks to hours. VMware CMP also supports day two activities such as continuous monitoring of resource utilization and the ability to right size and reclaim capacity as needed. The third use case is DevOps ready IT. Organizations embarking on DevOps ready IT are transforming both the process of developing software and how IT operations and application development teams work together. VMware's CMP provides a unified approach to modeling a complex, multi-tiered application, dramatically speeding up the delivery of complete application stacks to developers. Our CMP also provides developers policy-based direct access to infrastructure resources, both through an API and a self-service portal. A continuous delivery solution, vRealize CodeStream, natively integrates with our CMP to provision a complete application stack as needed to support automation of deployment pipelines. To make it easier for our customers to implement these use cases, we have realigned and our packaging of our management offerings. Each newly defined edition of a CMP solution, the vRealize suite, maps to one of these three use cases. VRealize Suite standard offers advanced operations management capabilities to address the intelligent operations use case. The advanced edition adds infrastructure automation capabilities, while the enterprise edition provides application automation and monitoring to address DevOps ready IT. License portability across all three editions ensures that licenses are transferable across both on premise and supported public clouds. With this launch, we have also simplified other components of our pricing and packaging. For example, vSphere and vSOM offerings have been reduced from six to three. And vCloud Suite is now a soft bundle of vRealize Suite and vSphere, ensuring consistent management across both suites and providing cost-effective way to build out your virtual infrastructure. At this time, I'd like to welcome Chris Nakagaki, Lead Technical Engineer in AutoTrader's Cloud Infrastructure Services team. AutoTrader is a leading online car shopping site, is a great example of a customer successfully executing on the first use case, intelligent operations, driving consolidation ratios across thousands of virtual machines from eight to one to 60 to one or more. Chris, please join me. Chris, great to have you here. Maybe you could start a little bit by telling us about AutoTrader and what they're about. Uh, thanks for having me. So AutoTrader is now part of a bigger company called Cox Automotive, and oh. that makes up several different brands. Some of our biggest brands are AutoTrader and KBB, but over 30 different brands oh, underneath that's that. Kelly Blue Book? Correct. Okay, that's big. So one of, the, and one of the things that you may not know about us is that we actually touch out of three out of four car buyers in the U.S. Wow. That's big. So you, you guys are the internet juggernaut of automotive. <laughs> pretty much, pretty much. Okay, excellent. Uh, so if you could maybe uh, next, uh, Chris, touch up on uh, how we are using vRealize products in the intelligent operations in, with an auto trader. Maybe start by describing the environment a little bit and how you're using the products. So we started in the auto trader side of the business in okay. several of our subsidiaries with around 3,000 VMs or so, monitoring that. And we were gathering companies at that time too. And then we combined to a bigger company to where now we're monitoring over 13,000 VMs and growing. And we still have another business unit to add. Okay, so that's good solid growth. And is this mostly on-prem uh, vSphere uh, VMs or other VMs, uh, other hypervisors as well? Yeah, so most of our on-premise is vSphere. Okay. Um, however, we do some, have some AWS integration as well. Okay, so AWS for the public cloud. So could you maybe elaborate a little bit about how you're using AWS within uh, AutoTrader? Yeah, so typically we use it for more, more of a 
our starter businesses where we don't want to invest quite a lot of capital into it mm -hmm. until we figured out a good uh, pricing model or revenue model for it. And once we figured that out, we then go and evaluate it to see whether we keep it in AWS or it makes more sense to bring it on-premise. Okay, and so you're using Z-Rise operation not only for the on-premise uh, VMs, but also for, for AWS. Correct. Could you maybe talk a little bit about uh, you know, how you're using these products uh, you know, in some maybe use cases uh, that you may be using in troubleshooting or capacity, et cetera? Yeah, so we, we use it extensively for troubleshooting. Whenever an issue comes up, we're able to confidently tell the business whether infrastructure is in fact causing issues. Um, other things that we do are project planning. So we're able to then determine and uh, let our customers know with confidence whether we can deliver additional VMs to them or whether we need to purchase additional on-premise resources. All right, so uh, any uh, outages recently or? Uh, thankfully not, at All least right. not with the vSphere stuff. <laughs> okay, fabulous. So hey, it's delivering an outage-free experience for you. That's oh awesome. yeah. Uh, and maybe another area to touch on, Chris, briefly is uh, if you could talk about um, some of the business benefits you're seeing from this, uh, you know, for, from before and after perspective. Yeah, so some of our consolidation ratios were actually quite low. So we were only doing like eight to one per ESX host. Um, however, with v Realize Operations, we've been able to get it up to, in some environments, up to 120 to one. Okay, so that's, that's almost a, well, more than a 10x improvement in consolidation ratios. Uh, maybe t touch a little bit on productivity and, and uh, from, of the staff, et cetera, or? Uh, it's definitely able to allow us to get greater consolidation ratios and be able to deliver VMs more rapidly with more intelligence and more confidence to say that, yes, the infrastructure can handle, in fact, this kind of over-allocation. Okay, well, thank you. This was a really great story. It's a real privilege for VMware to be part of the uh, growth story at uh, AutoTrader and its parent company. And we really appreciate the opportunity uh, you know, to actually serve you in, in your quest towards no outages, so that's awesome. Yes, thank you very much, appreciate it. Thank you. But now let's turn from operations to automation, the engine behind our cloud management platform and the driving force behind the use cases of automated IT and infrastructure as a service, as well as DevOps ready IT. Let's hear from some of our other customers about how automation is transforming, not just their ability to deliver IT services to the business, but how they are literally transforming the business as well. One of the Almac divisions, Almac Clinical Technologies, produces software in support of clinical trials. And one of the largest challenges they faced was the ability to get those trials from customer PO to live in as short a time frame as possible. We implemented the Realize Automation to help us with the automation and automatic delivery of both the infrastructure, the platform, and the software itself. And we can now deliver a platform to support the application in as little as three hours, where previously when we were doing that manually, it would have taken three weeks. So with the delivery of the new platform, we've been able to increase productivity, we've been able to increase quality, and we've been able to reduce the number of quality incidents associated with our software. Pass that back to the benefit of the patients because the trial is ready, patients can be enrolled much quicker and drug can get into the patients in a much shorter time frame there for bringing them relief. When we roll out VRA7 and start leveraging the new sort of converged blueprint architecture, the big thing for us there will be is that we can align it with our accreditation processes and our different environmental boundaries and be able to properly map those inheritable controls that we have to document and work on and be able to deliver a better infrastructure experience for our IT consumers of services. We will be able to drive more efficiencies with VRA7. And honestly, even with 6, we've seen huge gains. The IDM stuff is huge. The authentication in VRA7 is monstrously important. The governance engine that VRA has both today and moving forward has actually been great because that's actually something our security and compliance teams, they want us to be doing more of. My conservative estimate to um, time saved per FTE over the last 18 months since we really went live with VRA is at about eight hours a week, every week, per data center staff, and we have eight guys right now. VRA has been monumental in driving a lot of the process and business flow changes that we've needed to make for years, and it is a foundational piece of that transformation. 
we have this really focused capability on automation. And the VRA tools, you know, we literally rely on that. We automate everything. With a click of a button, we've gotten automation down, the ability to create a server, to provide services and capabilities out to the business. And we operate literally in minutes and seconds, not days and weeks. The really standout features of NSX and security is the micro-segmentation capability. And the ability to wrap anything, whether it be a data, a server, an application, and give it a security profile, is, you know, lack of a better term, awesomeness. So the benefits of bringing automation in NSX is really what my entire engineering team says. Their motto is fundamentally, if we can't automate it, we don't need it. Business alignment to me is simply doing what the business wants. They don't understand the technology. What they see is the outcome of us able to deliver more for the business. So I argue that speed today is the absolute competitive advantage. The business sees that in our ability to deliver projects faster, better, cheaper, and how fast we're starting to change their expectations of technology capabilities. Those customer stories are representative of the huge impact that automation can bring to IT and your businesses. That impact can now be even greater with the release last December of the new 7.0 version of vRealize Automation. As I mentioned earlier, VRA 7 now provides a unified service blueprint that allows you to model and provision complete application stacks and their logical networks via a native integration with NSX. Let's take a look at a short demo to see how this works. Okay, so let's jump right into the demo. I'm gonna log into Virilize Automation 7.0 and just real quick give you an example of what our desired end result is. Essentially, VRA 7 allows you to deliver a service catalog that covers all the services desired by the organization. And each one of these services, once published, become a self-service governed and life-cycled managed entity. So for example, we have infrastructure as a service, we have networking and security as a service, in this case, NSX. We have platform services and we have public cloud services, and in this example, uh, AWS. So let's take a step back and show you how we got to this point and where the magic happens as far as uh, application authoring goes. I'm gonna jump over to the design tab in the blueprints category. I can see all the available blueprints that have already been built and the status that they're on. Uh, jumping down to software components um, are a list of all the software components that have been created by an application architect or an app author um, that define what a, any given application is. And here we have a mix of uh, Linux and Windows applications that are in fact platform independent and can be dragged and dropped onto a canvas uh, to be part of a provisioning uh, of a machine's provisioning lifecycle. And finally, we have X as a service, where we can define services leveraging vRealize Orchestrator and essentially be able to deliver anything as a service. And a good example here would, would be to include tools uh, or broader ecosystem capabilities such as Puppet or Chef uh, or Infoblox or any, uh, any other external system that we want to incorporate as part of our overall blueprint. Okay, so let's go back to the Blueprints tab and create our blueprint. Um, and in this case, I'm logged in as an application architect, and I'm going to come in here and I'm going to create an application. Uh, the use case here is a Windows-based web app that I'm going to use to publish my next generation application. We'll call this our MSBU app, and we'll generally give it a good description uh, and fill out some of the basics. Next, we have our NSX settings tab, and the NSX settings tab is a, it sits in a very prominent position as far as uh, demonstrating the integration between vRealize Automation 7 and NSX. And in this tab, um, once NSX integration is done on the back end, I'm able to very rapidly start consuming those NSX services. So I would select the transport zone and allow app isolation where I can start building the framework for my micro-segmented application. So in, depending on the use case, I certainly would want to take advantage of that. So I'm gonna hit OK here and we see our application canvas. Now, we do have an option to build application, uh, you know, the operating systems from scratch, but in this case, I'm going to leverage pre-existing blueprints that my IaaS architects have already built. So for this use case, I'm going to leverage a Windows server, 
for my database backend and another Windows Server for my web frontend. So taking a look here, we can see we have our web tier and we have our, jumping over, our database tier, which is running, which is going to run SQL. Um, next up, we want to add our software components to this application. So we've got, as I mentioned, our SQL backend and SQL, of course, is going to need the .NET framework um, as well as IIS running uh, on that box. Uh, on the front end, we're going to have IIS and we're going to have .NET as core components for this application. And the use cases are gonna vary, of course. So just like that, with drag and drop motions, I've been able to complete the application configuration of each one of these tiers. Now, next up, and most importantly, is networking and security. And again, with the integration with uh, NSX and the ability to integrate at the API level, I'm very easily and seamlessly able to drag and drop networks and networking services directly onto this canvas. So for example, I wanna bring an, a, an on-demand routed network onto this canvas, and that allows me to create a network on demand based on a deployment profile of the application. So in, in this case, we have an on-demand profile in the background. I drag and drop that network, and at deploy time, I will dynamically build a new routed network to be consumed by this application. Next up is security. I'm going to use a couple of pre-existing security profiles. Um, our networking and security architects have created a profile um, for production environments and for the database tier. And likewise, a security group for my web tier, such as the production web tier security group. Um, in a lot of cases, these security groups are going to be pre-created, but we also have the ability to create an on-demand security group, which leverages security policies and builds a security group and joins those, uh, the OS components to that group uh, dynamically at request time. And then finally, for my web front end, I'm going to want to load balance it. But before I do that, let's go ahead and bind these machines to their available resources. Once I've dragged and dropped the machines onto the canvas, I'm able to add a virtual NIC and bind it to the appropriate security group. And as you can see, I create these logical wires so that I can visually see the topology of this application and the connected networks. So likewise, I'm gonna do the same thing for the database. Jump over to the network tab, add an interface for that network, and then of course, tie it into the database tier um, for um, the security group. Now I have a completed application minus the load balancer. So to have more than one web service that is automatically and dynamically load balanced, I'm going to drag and drop that on-demand load balancer, select the machine that I want to load balance, select the interface, the VIP network, and then the ports and protocols that will be load balanced as part of this policy. So quick, click on save, and a step back and we can see our completed application. And next steps are going to be to save and publish the application so that it can then be entitled and consumed via the catalog. Now, that example was built on top of a vSphere use case. But if we take a look here, you can see that I've built a very similar use case leveraging Amazon Web Services and the native integration uh, of VRA7 into Amazon. And in fact, I used the same exact software components, but this time dragged them and dropped them on top of machines built for Amazon. And in the same exact way I've built those vSphere machines, I could publish, entitle, and lifecycle manage these machines as well. I hope this short demo gave you some idea of the powerful new capabilities in vRealize Automation 7. I encourage you to learn more about our automation and CMP solutions as well as the pricing and packaging changes I discussed earlier. A good starting point are the management materials posted on this site. The only way to move forward on your journey to the cloud is to take that first step. We have worked with thousands of customers and are eager to assist you with a range of services from initial assessments to providing a full package that deliver the private cloud in a couple of months. Please give us a call. We are here to make 
2016, the year of your cloud. Thank you. Thank you.